Hello guys, welcome to our research chemistry classes. We will be learning today about oxidation and reduction reactions. Oxidation and reduction. So, why oxidation and reduction? Internally, all the reactions in chemistry, nearly about 90% reactions, those are occurring in our laboratory or in natural processes are oxidation and reduction. And we will be confined ourselves about this oxidation and reduction reactions which occurs mainly in aqueous medium. Actually oxidation and reduction reactions or simply redox reactions are accompanied by transfer of electrons from one species to other. Now we have already knew from previous classes that oxidation means oxidation means loss of electrons that is one or more than one electrons by an atom or an ion and reduction means gain of one or more than one electrons by an atom or an ion. So see the example that here iron atom lost two electrons to produce ferrous ion that is iron is oxidized to ferrous ion and ferrous ion in turn lost one electron to give ferric ion and again ferric ion accepts or gain, gains one electron to give ferrous ion which in turn accepts two electrons to give to produce iron atom. That's why we are saying that oxidation means loss of one or more than one electron or electrons by an atom or ion and reduction means gain of one or more than one electrons or electrons by an atom or ion. But strictly speaking the term gain or loss is a loose option to define this redox reaction since there are also such reactions in which direct transfer of electron does not occur. For example, in the reaction hydrogen with chlorine to give hydrogen chloride, here electron transfer is not occurring from hydrogen towards chlorine atom, but there is no tra direct transfer of electrons but polarization of bonded electrons from less electronegative hydrogen atom towards more electronegative chlorine atom. That's why we use a term oxidation number which measures the state of oxidation of different atoms in a molecule or ion which they acquire while combination to form an atom for sorry to form a molecule or an ion. So to define the oxidation number we may say that the oxidation number of an element in a molecule or in a species in general is defined as the average formal charge that the atom acquires in the molecule or ion. During a redox reaction, the species whose oxidation number is increased from the reactants to the products are said to be oxidized and the species whose oxidation number is decreased from the reactants to the products is called reduced, is called to be reduced, get reduced. So here are some species, we have to mark up this which we will encounter throughout our syllabus during balancing or during showing different reactions in terms of oxidation and reduction. So here some species which act always as oxidants. So these species are potassium permanganate KNO4, potassium dichromate K2CrO7, potassium chromate K2CrO4, manganese dioxide MnO2, 
लेड डाइऑक्साइड पीबीओ टू सोडियम विस्फोटेट एन ए बीआईओ थ्री ओजोन हेलोजेंस एक्स टू दैट इज फ्लोरिन क्लोरिन ब्रोमिन एंड आयोडिन कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड नाइट्रिक एसिड कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड एक्सेट्रा देर आर सम स्पीसीज विच ऑलवेज एक्ट एज रिडक्टेंट दैट इज एवरी मेटल एनी काइंड ऑफ मेटल्स कार्बन फॉस्फरस सल्फर दिज नॉन मेटल्स कार्बन मोनोक्साइड एमोनिया हाइड्रोजन सल्फाइड हाइपोफॉस्फरस एसिड एटसेट्रा ऑलवेज एक्ट एज रिडक्टेंट एंड देर आर सम स्पीसीज ऑल्सो विच एक्ट बोथ एज ऑक्सीडेंट एंड रिडक्टेंट सल्फर डाइऑक्साइड नाइट्रोस एसिड एच एनओ टू एंड हाइड्रोजन पार ऑक्साइड आर सच स्पीसीज which may act both as oxidizing agent as well as producing agent third during a redox reaction all the atoms in a molecule or an ion does not get oxidized or reduced in general only one and in some cases those are exceptions more than one that is two atoms can be oxidized or reduced simultaneously so the atom in general which which undergoes oxidation or reduction during redox reaction are called active atoms or central atoms there are some rule of thumb of finding these central atoms there are three points regarding three rule of thumbs regarding finding out the central atoms number 1 in case of molecules having three different atoms the middle one will be the active or central atom for example kmn4 has three different atoms potassium manganese and oxygen so manganese is the middle one and it will be the central atom that is during redox reaction manganese will get oxidized or reduced whatever it may be in potassium dichromate chromium similarly is the central atom in potassium chromate again chromium is the central atom in nitric acid nitrogen is the central atom here also you see that there are three different atoms hydrogen nitrogen and oxygen so the middle one will be always the central atom in sulfuric acid sulfur will be the central atom and number 2 in case of molecules having two different atoms the relatively unknown atom the relatively unknown atom will be the central atom so for manganese dioxide out of manganese and oxygen we are not acquainted of manganese so more therefore manganese will be the central atom similarly in case of pbo2 pb will be the central atom in case of oxygen only single atom so they are oxygen and halogen atoms are simply central atoms in case of you see carbon monoxide carbon will be the central atom in case of ammonia nitrogen in case of h2s sulfur in case of sulfur dioxide sulfur and number 3 number 3 in case of molecules having sorry only 
hydrogen and oxygen atoms generally you should remember the term generally o atom will be the central atom so in hydrogen peroxide oxygen will be the central atom clear in water similarly there were water oxygen would be the central atom and some of them here nabio3 again, again there are three different atoms of this part will be the central atom in h3po2 hydrogen phosphorus oxygen there are three different atoms so the middle one phosphorus will be the central atom in nitrous acid there are three different atoms again hydrogen nitrogen and oxygen so nitrogen the will be the central atom since it remains in the middle position now we should know how to determine the oxidation number of an atom in a molecule how to determine the oxidation number ol means oxidation number of an atom in a molecule or ion that is we have to find out the oxidation number of the central metal atom of a molecule or of an ion so firstly there are several points firstly the oxidation number of hydrogen atoms h atom attached to non metals is always plus 1 and in case of metals it is minus 1 like in calcium hydride ch2 the oxidation number of hydrogen is minus 1 okay number 2 oxidation number of sodium potassium that is all alkali metals are plus 1 and that of calcium magnesium etc that is all in case of all alkali not metals it is minus 2 okay minus 2 sorry minus 2 number 3 the oxidation number of oxygen atom is generally plus minus 2 with some exceptions in suboxides peroxides and superoxides in peroxide it is generally minus 1 number 4 oxidation number of halogens that is fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine are generally minus 1 of course there are some ex 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 exceptions number 5 oxidation number of free atom is always zero nil number 6 oxidation number of a radical is equal to its valency with suitable sign for example in case of sulfate so2 minus it is minus 2 in case of nitrate no3 minus it is minus 1 in case of nitrite no2 minus it is minus 1 in case of phosphate po4 3 minus it is minus 3 etc Number seven, the algebraic summation that is the sum of the oxidation numbers along with suitable signs of the oxidation number of all the atoms in a molecule is nil, that is zero. And number eight, oxidation means increase in the oxidation number, and reduction means decrease in the oxidation number. I am repeating again. Number one, oxidation number of hydrogen atoms attached to non metals is plus 1 in case of metals it is minus 1 i have given the example of calcium hydride where calcium is directly attached to hydrogen and hydrogen possesses the oxidation number of minus 1 oxidation number of alkali alkali metals like sodium and potassium are always plus 1 and There are alkali not metals like calcium and magnesium are always minus two. Number three, oxygen oxidation number of oxygen atom is generally minus two. In case of peroxide, it is minus one. In case of superoxide, it is minus half. Oxidation number of halogens, that is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, are generally minus one. There are also some examples, exceptions. Number five, oxidation number of free atom is always zero. Number six, oxidation number of radical is equal to its valency with suitable sign. I have given the examples. Number seven, 
algebraic summation of oxidation number of all the atoms in a molecule is zero. And in case of radical, it is equal to its charge along with the sign. And number eight, oxidation means increase in the oxidation number and reduction means decrease in oxidation number. Now, we will be trying to find out the oxidation number of the central atoms in different molecules. Here the central atom, as we have previously knew, that the central atom is Mangan is Mn. So how could you find the oxidation number of Mangan is in this molecule? Suppose we take the oxidation of manganese as is x it is unknown to us for potassium atom we know that the oxidation number is plus 1 and for oxygen atom we know that it is key minus 2 now for 4 oxygen atom it is key 4 into minus 2 and the oxidation number of the unknown species is x and we know the algebraic summation is always 0 here we can find that x equals to plus 7. We should always give the sign plus or minus before the oxidation number is mentioned. So here the oxidation number of manganese atom is plus 7. So we write the manganese, write the oxidation number of the atom right in the top of the symbol that is here plus 7. Similarly in case of K2, Cr2, O7 the central atom is chromium we will find that oxidation number of chromium. So let the oxidation number be x. Now two, there are two potassium atoms, two into each potassium atom possesses the oxidation number of plus one, plus two, there are two chromium atoms, each with oxidation number of key, x, plus there are seven oxygen atoms which, with each of oxidation number of minus two. That is equals to zero. And we get 2 plus 2x minus 14 equals to 0 or x equals to plus 6. So here we can write the oxidation number right, in the, right at the top of the symbol plus 6. Now these are, these are quite lengthy process to find out oxidation number. However, we should find out the oxidation number in a speedy manner so as to comply with the balancing equation with oxidation number method. Therefore, we should try it manually, we should try it in mind how to find out the oxidation number. You should keep it in mind that the summation of, algebraic summation of all the oxidation numbers in a molecule or in a molecule is, must be zero. So, you see potassium chromate K2CrO4 here the central atom is chromium. We have to find out the oxidation number of chromium. Now potassium has, each potassium has the oxidation number of plus 1. So two, for 2 potassium it is plus 2. Each oxygen atom has the oxidation number of minus 2. So for 8 oxygen atom it is minus 8. So plus 2 and minus 8. If we add this plus 2 and minus 8, we get minus 6. So for which number? the total oxidation number becomes nil that is equals to plus 6 so we write here plus 6 that is the oxidation number of chromium will be plus 6 similarly in case of NaBiO3 sodium bismuthate the central atom is bismuth now what is the oxidation number of bismuth? sodium alkali metal so its oxidation number according to the chart it is plus 1 oxygen is it is minus 2 3 oxygen are there therefore the total oxidation of oxygen is minus 6 plus 1 and minus 6 is minus 5 then to make the total oxidation number nil we have the oxidation number of bismuth plus 5 similarly in case of MnO2 the central atom is manganese so how could you find out the oxidation number of manganese oxygen has the oxidation number of minus 2 in general so, two oxygen atoms will have the oxidation number of minus 4. So, manganese will have plus 4. So, that the algebraic solution must be equals to 0. And this is how, in short, how we could find out the oxidation numbers of the central atom.
Now for radicals, you see, I have already told you that for radicals, the sum of the oxidation number, the algebraic summation of the oxidation numbers of the constituent atoms present in the radicals must always be equal to its charge. Therefore, see for sulfate, SO4 2 minus. Let the sulfur atom has the oxidation number of X. Then X plus there are four oxygen atoms. Each has an oxidation number of minus 2 must be equal to this, this algebraic summation must be equal to its charge that is minus 2 here. Yeah. So x minus 8 equals to minus 2 and x equals to 8 minus 2 equals to plus 6. So sulfur atom in sulfate ion possesses the oxidation number of plus 6. Similarly, in case of ferrocyanide ion, Fe Cn whole 6 4 minus ferrocyanide ion ferrocyanide let iron atom having the oxidation number of x cyanide is Cn minus so the oxidation number of cyanide radical is minus 1 there are 6 cyanide ions so 6 into minus 1 equals to charge minus 4. So, x minus 6 equals to e minus 4 or x equals to 6 minus 4 equals to 2. That's why the oxidation number of iron will be plus 2. Okay? Now, we will be, we will be determining the oxidation number of some atoms in molecules. These are some special cases. For example, CrO5, chromium pentoxide, or perchromic acid, or chromium peroxide, we can say. In this case, in these cases, special cases, we have to always know the structure or mark up the structure of the molecule. So, before doing this, we should know what a peroxide linkage is. A peroxide linkage is bond O bond O bond like in hydrogen peroxide there is a peroxide linkage and whenever oxygen will be in peroxide linkage it will possess the oxidation number of minus 1 each therefore in chromium peroxide you see the structure it, is, it has a butterfly structure CrO 4 and 1 it is like a butterfly looking like a butterfly these are two wings. You see, there are two peroxide linkages. Bond O, bond O, bond. So, this oxygen possesses minus one oxygen state. And again here, bond O, bond O, bond. So, here is also, each oxygen possesses minus one oxygen state. And if this oxygen is key, quite different, it in general possesses minus two oxygen state. So the algebraic summation turns out to be minus 6, minus 2, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 6. So chromium will possess an oxidation number of plus 6 and not plus 10. And not plus 10, plus 6. In case of part sulfuric acid, the structure is a symmetrical one. Now we compute the oxidation number of different oxygen atoms. You see here the oxygen possesses minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. The hydrogen atom possesses plus 1, plus 1 because it, these are attached to non-metals. And these two oxygens are linked to a peroxide linkage, so they are they possess oxidation number of minus 1. If we sum up these all oxidation numbers, if we take the algebraic summation of all the oxygen numbers written, it will be minus 12. And therefore, the two sulfur atoms remaining will have the total oxidation number of plus 12. So each sulfur atom will have oxidation number of plus 6. Okay? Again, for par monosulfuric acid, H2SO5, par monosulfuric acid, the structure is 
S O O H O H O O. Now this oxygen possesses minus two oxygen state each. Hydrogen plus one, hydrogen plus one. But these two oxygen leave through peroxide linkage, so they possess oxidation number of minus one each. If we sum these all the oxidation numbers, we have the summation of minus six. So here the sulfur atom possesses an oxidation number of plus six. Again, in case of H two S two, you see this is the structure like this. Like hydrogen peroxide, here also sulfur will have the oxidation number of minus one each, and hydrogen will have plus one each. Okay. Now next one. Br three O eight. This is a very very important one. Br three O eight. Bromine octoxide. Br O O O Br O O Br double bond O O O. These three oxygens have minus two each, and bromine will be will possess plus six oxygen state. And these three oxygens also minus two each, and so bromine will possess. Plus six oxygen state minus six plus six minus six plus six and this two oxygen minus two minus two each that is minus four so this bromine will possess plus four oxygen state. Now another case in potassium suboxide PO two potassium suboxide. Since potassium has an oxygen state state of plus one, so two oxygen will have minus one. Two oxygen atom will have an oxidation number of minus one, so that the elementary summation becomes zero. Therefore, each oxygen atom will have an oxidation number of minus half. Potassium plus one, that is minus half. So that plus one plus two into minus half, it becomes equals to zero. Okay. Now, in case of ammonium nitrate (NH4, NO3), these two nitrogen atoms. We have to find out the oxidation number, oxidation state, or oxidation number of these two different nitrogen atoms. You see, this can be divided into two parts: ammonium ion. Here is the oxidation number of ammonium nitrogen Vx. Then Vx plus 4 into plus 1 equals to plus 1, or Vx equals to minus 3. This ammonium nitrogen possesses minus three, and for this nitrogen, you know, three minus. Let this be x. X equals to sorry, x plus three into minus two oxygen. Generally, has oxidation number of minus two. So, x plus three into minus two equals to minus one, or x equals to plus five. So here, the oxidation number of nitrogen is plus five. So in the same formula, the two different nitrogen atom possess two different oxidation numbers, or they are in two different oxidation states. Similarly, in case of you say hydrochloric acid H N three, hydrogen possesses here nitrogen is the Single atom. Hydrogen possesses the oxidation number of plus one. We know that. Therefore, nitrogen must possess three nitrogen must possess the oxidation number of minus one, and each will possess an oxidation number of minus one third. So, oxidation number may also be fractional and negative also. Another thing for carbon suboxide, C3O2, C3O2. This is also a special case. The structure we have to mind it, mind remind the structure. C double bond C double bond C double bond O double bond O. Here the oxidation of oxygen is minus two, minus two, plus two, plus two, and zero. You see symmetrical. The summation becomes nil, zero. 
there the oxidation number of three different carbon atoms in carbon suboxide carbon suboxide is a very important fact now in sodium thiosulfate sodium thiosulfate in a2 h2o3 sulfur atom two different sulfur atom will possess two different oxidation states so how You see, this sulfur, sodium thiosulfate can be divided into two parts, Na2SO3 and sulfur. So this sulfur will have the oxygen state of zero, and this one will have the oxygen state of plus four. You see, two sodium, two into plus one, plus two, three oxygen, three into minus two, minus six, plus two and minus six, minus four. So sulfur will possess the oxidation number of three plus four. So this sulfur will possess an oxidation number of plus 4 so in sodium thiosulfate the two sulfur atoms are in different oxidation states and those are 0 and plus 4 but the average oxidation number becomes plus 2 minus 6 plus 2 minus 4 therefore two sulfur possess plus 4 and each sulfur possess plus 2 state this is the average oxygen state so students for today, up to this, we'll come back with redox reaction again. How to balance redox reaction by oxidation number method and ion electron method in the next session. Till then, goodbye.